in charge of the images of the emperors, the ton theon iknon. That is, their portraits, or more precisely, their busts, which were venerated. In 193 BC, Antiochus III instituted high priestesses who shall wear gold crowns that shall have her portrait for the cult of Laodice. That is, they bear the queen's bust. And on page 416, he's discussing the idea of image. This icon, this Hebrew zelum, the Greek icon, always represents a physical image of the reality it's depicting. On page 416, because an image not only implies the likeness of a copy to a model, but derives from an earlier reality, it implies a relation of dependency and of origination. And possessing to some extent the same form, it resembles its precursor. It is in this sense that God decides, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Genesis 1.26 He has a nature akin to God's, like a son begotten by his father. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty plain. Oh, I've got the footnote marked also. Footnote 19. Artabanus, this is still on page 460, and I'll read this too. Artabanus says, For us the noblest law is that which orders that people rever the king and bow down before him as before the image of the God who rules the world. This is in Plutarch. Because resemblance signifies an exact replica that is presented as a real image. Very interesting. It's always physical. Now, in relation to that, Spiros Zolihatis. Zolihatis. <laughs> He's tough to pronounce. The Complete Word Study Dictionary of the New Testament. Huge text. 17, 1800 pages thick. Well, 1300 pages. Fabulous reference text. Under the Greek icon. He says it means to be like, to resemble. This is on page 512 of Zolihatis. A representation, an image as of a man made of gold, silver, or other material. A monarch's likeness impressed on a coin, an image, a resemblance, and a likeness, so on and so forth. Then, did I get them all? Oh, no, my final, my final, and, and this book is too little known, it's, it's too bad. Ed Watson, Mormonism, the Faith of the 21st Century. Very excellent, it's by Leahona Publications, 1998. This is volume one. On page 211, he discusses this Greek term, icon, which is the Hebrew word, zelum. So everything of icon is also zelum. This is used in the Old Testament Greek. He says it means a visible image, a likeness, a form, an effigy, or an appearance. Jesus is the image of the Father, according to Colossians 1.15. Who is the image, the icon, of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? To look at Jesus is to look at the Father, since Jesus looks exactly like his Father. John 12.45, John 14.9, Hebrews 1, 2, and 3, 1 Timothy 3.16, and John 1 and 1. Since Jesus was in humanoid form and possessed a physical body, these passages show his Father likewise possesses a physical body and is in anthropomorphic form. He isn't an omnipresent, formless, non-material being. It is an outside appearance that is discernible with boundaries. That is the meaning of the Hebrew word zelum and the Greek word icon. Was the image, the icon, on the coin Jesus used an outward physical resemblance of Caesar, or was it just a figure of speech? <laughs> You see how that works. That, that, that's really interesting. These images, these idols resembling mortal men, birds, beasts, and creeping things, the idols of the Gentiles, are they discernible? They are called icons. Yes, they are. Can these icons be seen by man? Yes, they can. 
he talks about various New Testament passages of Scripture that use this word, this is on page 212 of Watson's study, uses icon the same way that all the others do. This means an exterior physical resemblance. It's not a non-discernible mystical essence, an alcia, or a, a non-physical nature. It is corporeal. It is dealing with the physical. Us. Arms. Head. Eyes. Ears. Mouth. Nose. Neck. Hands. And then Kittel, finally. And, and the reason I have, oh no, this is the Kiel Delich. The Kiel Delich commentary on the Old Testament. This is in the Pentateuch, Volume 1. I think this is like a, a ten-volume commentary also. It's huge commentary. He basically ends up saying that image doesn't mean physical likeness, which is silly. He misinterprets the Hebrew here. But on page 63, he does say, Modern commentators have correctly observed that there is no foundation for the distinction drawn by the Greek and after them by many of the Latin fathers between the Greek word icon, that is imago, and the similitudo. The former, the icon, they supposed to represent the physical aspect of the likeness of God. And then he goes on and says, however, that can't really be, it's got to be a spiritual essence. Which is silly. The Hebrew and the Greek are clearly dealing with the physical. I just wanted to emphasize that part. Bachboy didn't emphasize all that. That's me yammering. But it's important to understand that we should let the scripture mean what it says. This is why it's so important to get back to the Hebrew and the Greek. You'll read some commentators who say, well, no, this, this let us make man in, the, in our image and likeness is a moral image, or it is a spiritual image. The Hebrew and the Greek do not say moral image. They mean physical, corporeal, three-dimensional image with discernible boundaries that we can see. And Adam's posterity was in the image and likeness of Adam, who was in the image and likeness of God. It is meant to impress the physical aspect of God on us. We are theomorphic. This is, this is Bakavoy's point. And I think it's, it's powerfully shown by several texts as well. So, I've made enough of that. Humans are of the same genus and species as God. And this is clearly biblical. This is uh, Heiser, page 289 of the Farms Review. Number 19, or volume 19, number 1, 2007. On page 290, now this is what I've been building up to all night long. I, I apologize. I, I get excited when I got, start studying the, uh, the Greek and the Hebrew. But Adam, Bakavoy's interpretation of Adam is so exquisitely delicious here. <laughs> it, this is one of the best expositions of Adam that I have ever read. Get ready. Sit down. Take a deep breath, go get some popcorn first, or some licorice, or whatever you do when you're at the movies, because this is going to knock you out. This is some of the most remarkable commentary on Adam I have ever read. And this is the part that really took Heiser also. He, he was really impressed with it, and rightly so. So, here we go.